Hi, my name is Daniel Kitts. I'm a producer with the Agenda with Steve Pakin. And in our ongoing uh, coverage this week of the issues uh, coming out of Sri Lanka in advance of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting this weekend, um, I wanted to uh, talk about the issue of responsible tourism. And uh, joining me, as he did to talk about a more wide-ranging topic earlier, is Fred Carver. He is the campaign director of the Sri Lanka Campaign for Peace and Justice. Fred, uh, thanks again for joining me. Uh, glad to be here again. Um, so I wanted to ask you, the, the travel guide company Lonely Planet named Sri Lanka the top tourist destination of 2013, and uh, the Lonely Planet website states, quote, now the bitter conflict is over, investment is fueling the tourism industry, and visitor numbers are steadily increasing. Prices are affordable, and with low-cost flights from the convenient travel hub of Bangkok, Sri Lanka is emerging as one of the planet's best value destinations, unquote. Sounds great. Should I pack my bags? Um, you know, I, I would have no problem with you packing your bags. Uh, my problem with Lonely Planet was not that they were promoting tourism in Sri Lanka. I mean, I've been to Sri Lanka as a tourist many times myself. My problem with Lonely Planet is that they were only giving half of the picture. Um, and they were presenting this very, very rose-tinted view of Sri Lanka. Um, now, many of the things that you have said... Um, in that introduction are correct, but they only paint half the picture. And Lonely Planet's biggest shortcoming, in my view, was was to not fill in that you know this 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 investment is taking place at a price. This investment is taking place in large part um, through uh, the militarization of the tourism industry, and also that while the war may be over, the the serious harm that was done to uh, the the population uh, in the war affected areas uh, that continues to this day. Now, everyone on the island suffered during the Civil War, and it mm -hmm. seems that, that one thing that everyone seems to agree on uh, when it comes to Sri Lanka is that it, it needs more economic development. So, um, in the end, is, is tourism uh, one of the better ways for, for fairly well-off Westerners to, to help, uh, sh help encourage Sri Lanka's economic recovery? I think that my concern is over the kind of... Um, tourism which the Sri Lankan government is attempting to encourage. So there are some mega hotels being built in Sri Lanka, um, the owners of whom are either international companies or more usually uh, Sri Lankan companies with very close ties to the government, either explicit or implicit. Um, and there are also a series, uh, not so much in the south, but one or two in the south, but certainly in the north, of military-run hotels. And I think if, if, if Western tourists are coming to Sri Lanka and they're spending money and their money is um, entering the local economies, then that is certainly a good thing. My concern is when Western tourists come to Sri Lanka, they're managed, and they're managed in such a way that their money largely ends up in the hands of the regime, and that this is particularly true in the north and the east, uh, where local residents aren't allowed to stay. Uh, lo sorry, where local residents aren't allowed to really um, get much of the benefit from the tourism industry. Uh, so our campaign's about asking people to make informed choices, asking people to do their research. Uh, we say small is beautiful. We say stay in local places, particularly if you can stay in homestays. That's incredibly worthwhile. Um, but um, even if you're going um, and you're just staying in the Hilton or, or the Shangri-La, at least go with your eyes open and be aware that if you are staying in the Hilton or the Shangri-La, very, very little of your money is going to make it to the local economy. And, and don't fool yourself into thinking that you're helping uh, by doing that. You've just given us several pointers for people that want to visit Sri Lanka but want to do it in a, a responsible and ethical way. Uh, small is beautiful, do your research, always have your eyes open. Is there anything else that, that you would encourage uh, people who want to visit Sri Lanka to do? Uh, well, we have a guide on our website. I mean, essentially, those are those are the key points. I mean, there's there's two things. One is that absolutely no trip to a country like Sri Lanka is going to be completely without uh, detrimental effects. You are facilitating the regime uh, purely by going when you pay your airport taxes. Uh, you cannot go into Sri Lanka without giving some money to the regime. However. By, by, by doing your research, by not staying in military-run hotels, by not going to the increasing number of military-run restaurants and food courts, you can minimize the amount of harm uh, that you do. 
At the same time, by going to Sri Lanka, you inevitably do an enormous amount of good. This is why we're not saying you should boycott Sri Lanka. Um, the Sri Lankan government is trying very hard to isolate an, uh, the, the Sri Lankan populace. Um, if we boycotted Sri Lanka, we'd only play into that. Um, and if you go, you help open up Sri Lanka. You help create narrative between cultures. You help create dialogue uh, between different communities. It's definitely a good thing. But the more you, time you spend with local people, um, and, and, the, and the more you go sort of off the beaten track, the more if you can you go to the north and to the east. Uh, going to the east is much easier than going to the north um, and the east is still a place with uh, large amounts of problems. Then you exacerbate the positive. So any trip to Sri Lanka has both positive and negative consequences. And we say it's not for us to say, it's a moral judgment for you to make as to whether the positive outweighs the negative or whether it doesn't. But what we've given our website is a, a toolkit for how you can increase the positive outcomes and uh, minimize the negative outcomes. All right. Well, lots to think about for people before they plan their next trip. Uh, Fred Carver, Campaign Director of the Sri Lanka Campaign for Peace and Justice, thanks again for joining me. Thank you very much.